Brother Sewing and Crafting family. Brother Brandon Ambassador Angela Wolf here, and I've got a very fun show for you today. You won't believe it. Yes, I'm quilting. Not really, but I'm quilting to design fabric. I'm going to show you how to cut really cool fabrics on the Scan and Cut. I'm going to show you how to put a block together, and I'll give you a little preview. I'm making fabric. Yes. Why would I make fabric? Because I like to make garments. So if I can use these quilt blocks and turn it into really cool fabric, then I can use that fabric to cut out my pattern. So say hi, say where you're from if you've never been here before. I'll be right back and grab your notebook. I'll give you a lot of tips today. All right. I think everything's working. We are live streaming on Brothers Sewing and Crafting Facebook and YouTube pages. I can see all of your comments. So I'm going to show you this really fun tutorial. Remember the quilt challenge? Let me give you a little uh, reminder. Here you go. There's the quilt challenge. That was the challenge that Cindy put together using the Brother software for quilting. I took that design, brought it into the software, changed the colors a little bit, and turned it into what I have right here for you this. Now, what in the world is that? Well, spring has arrived. You wouldn't know it today because it's storming like crazy out. So if we lose internet, just know it wasn't me. It's nasty out there today. So, <laughs> but this fabric I thought would make a great Kate skirt. So if you follow me for a while, you know I have Angela of Patterns. And the Kate skirt is a very classic style, easy to sew. What a great way to add some color. So you don't have to add three blocks like I did here. This is actually three, six, nine blocks together. The fabric is denim. And I thought this would make a really cute skirt using black as the overall color and using this as an accent. So I could either use one row or all three. I'll let you decide. I think I'm gonna use all three because it's really pretty. So first I'm gonna show you how I took the block, changed the colors, then we're gonna go to the scan and cut. I'm gonna show you how I cut all this, all these triangles, these itsy bitsy pieces on the scan and cut, and then we're gonna go sew. All right, so I see you all. Great to see you, great to see you. And by the way, I hope you all had a great weekend. I did, I went to visit my mom, it was her birthday, and got to see all my nieces and nephews. So, uh, very much fun. <laughs> now I'm recovering. All right, so here's a look one more time at the quilt block. This was the original. This is what Cindy designed. If you missed that episode, you can go back and watch it. And also, there's a whole blog post on Brother Sews. And Cindy has some downloads on her website, too. All right. So now let me bring up. This is what Cindy actually sewed with hers using some different colors. And then this is what I used. This is what I decided to do. So this was one block, black and gray. And I'll show you the second block. Very similar, just a little bit different color. Well, same colors, different. <laughs> so I wanted to piece together the grays and blacks. So this is the middle piece. So if you look right here, this is the middle piece that I did. So there's three blocks right here. That was that one. And then if you go back here and look at the first one, This is the outside ones. Now, full disclosure, I'm not a technical quilter, but I'm a perfectionist. So I will be the first to tell you, if you're a quilter and you're really good at it and you look at my points, just blur your glasses a little bit because <laughs> my points are not perfect. There are a few that are perfect and I was doing the happy dance. Then there were a few that were not. And because this is my first piece of fabric with quilting that, I've, like, that I'm happy with, I'm leaving it. So don't leave me a comment that my points aren't perfect because I already know that and I like them. So I'm going to use them. All right. So there's your laugh for the day. All right. So I'm going to take you over to the scan and cut. Well, actually, first, let me show you in the software. Uh, I think you're going to like this. For those of you that don't have the software, you can get it from the brother dealer, any brother dealer. Um, and you can also do sketches. I started this by doing a really cool sketch of what I wanted. And that's how I actually brought everything together. So uh, notepad, notepad works good too. And this pattern you can download. So even if you don't have the software, Cindy made it in a bunch of different sizes. I'm using the eight inch block. All right. So here you go. 
there is what I ended up with at the end. You can see each block. There's the centerpiece. So I thought, you know, when I put this together, this is going to kind of have a very, uh, very different type of look, but it's going to make great fabric. So I chose to have these black edges here with these triangles, because if I use black for the main fabric for my skirt, this will be the insert and it's going to look really cool, I thought. Well, I think I'm still working on it. You're going to sew it with me. So there's that. This is what I ended up working on. So I changed her blocks and added these other different colors. There's just one of the blocks that you can see. Of course, I was playing around. That's what I'm working on next. Squirrel. <laughs> I couldn't help it. The software is so much fun. So this is what I have. And I what I did is I downloaded this or exported it right here in the export. Cindy is a great help to that. I changed the seam allowance to a quarter of an inch. And I sent, I saved all of this so I have the pictures and then I was able to take this to my scan and cut to cut. Now, you could cut these pieces by yourself as well. I mean, it, it actually gives you the entire file with pattern pieces, with the colors, uh, and that's fine too. But if you have the scan and cut, why not use it? So I'm going to take you over to the scan and cut. Let me bring you right here. And first, I'm going to explain. I use the rotary blade. And I actually used just a standard mat, but you know, I was chatting with Cindy and I said, this worked fantastic. The fabric I'm using is a, like a lightweight denim with a very light stretch. And I thought, I'm not gonna, I don't wanna starch it. I don't wanna put anything on the back of it. I just wanna cut these pieces. Well, it worked really well. Now, if you have any issues with your fabric kind of popping up a little bit, then use the fabric mat with the rotary blade. So I'll take you over there and show you how this worked and then we'll go sew. All right. So on here, let's see, I think I actually, I didn't lose my stylus. That's very unusual. Retrieve data. Now I have a, quite a few things I've been working on in here. So I saved it to a file. There's my quilt block for my skirt. And you can see here's the black and here's the granite. It already has it split into pieces. So let me just bring up the black. And I can see I have these triangles here. I'm, this is just for one block, by the way. I actually cut three, six of the black blocks and three of the gray blocks. I can move these around. I can scan in the fabric. I want to just show you here. I'm going to bring you out a little bit. I've already cut this fabric. I didn't think you needed to see the cut. But I was able to scan in my fabric. This is denim. And look at how beautifully that cut out. My triangles, perfect. A little bit better than when I cut them myself. And I was able to peel that off with no problem. Now, this denim, by the way, it's just basically, I wouldn't say it's a medium weight. It's more of a medium to lightweight. Just a little bit of stretch. Then here is the gray left over. I'll put it on the mat. I think you'll see it better. You can see that I cut all of these pieces as well. All of this was done on the scan and cut. You don't see any little, I mean, it cut it just perfectly. I was actually impressed myself, to be honest with you. But I've been testing cutting different fabrics on the scan and cut, like knits. And this is a little, a little lighter weight than the black, and it has a light stretch as well. So the denim cut beautifully. I've got my mat upside down. And I'll just take you over here and show you. I used the rotary blade. which does really good if you throw it around. It has just that nice blade right there. It was able to go around the fabrics, no problem at all. And again, I didn't use starch on the fabric or anything else. All right, so on my screen, I could duplicate these, I could move them around. So for me, I scanned in my fabric and then I just moved these down. Let me go back here. I'll bring up the gray so you can see what the gray, there's quite a few pieces there. And I was able to move these around to be able to all be on my fabric. Now, one thing I wanna point out, and for those of you that are going to use this for fabric and not just for a quilt, the one thing that is not marked on these patterns is the grain line. So this box right here, if I take, I'll show you the quilt block in a second, but this is supposed to go sideways. So if I want all my grain lines facing up and down, these are fine. 
these are fine but this one needs to be rotated because if i if this is actually sewn in the quilt going this way i'm actually cutting it with the wrong grain line for what i want it's totally your choice but keep that in mind you're going to have to look at the photo and i'll bring the photo back up so you can see this So see these pieces right here? There's a couple long ones that go up and down, and then there's a couple of the long ones that go sideways. These triangles here won't matter a bit. So let me just bring up the one block. These two pieces are fine because you're going to cut them. I would cut them with the salvage here, and there's the box, right? This piece and this piece need to go up and down on the fabric, and this piece here and this piece here, I want them to go up and down on the fabric personally because I have some stretch in the fabric. So just keep in mind if you have a print or a pattern that you're trying to keep that you might have to turn these when you cut them on the fabric. It's totally your choice, but I thought I would mention that because for those of you that maybe are going to use this just for fabric and you're like, wait, my grain lines are all messed up. They're not really messed up. You're cutting either on the cross grain or up and down. What is a grain line? In case you don't know, you have the salvage of the fabric. If you go parallel to that, that's the grain line I usually cut on. Usually the fabric stretches this way, but you also have a cross grain. So it's not saying that it's wrong if you cut them going a different way, but just keep that in mind if you're using this for fabric for a garment. If you want the garment to stretch because you're using stretch fabric, make sure you cut the pieces the right way. So it takes a little bit of extra care to write that down and to take note of that. And it's really easy to change. So if I know on my piece here that I want two of these to be cut sideways and two of these to be cut up and down on the fabric, I'll leave these two this way. And then I'll take this one, edit, and I can rotate 90 degrees and 90 degrees. And again, if you're just cutting for a quilt, it probably won't matter so much, but if you're cutting for a garment, and you want to make sure that all of your pieces are cut the same way, uh, you can either change this around or cut them all the other direction. It's, it's completely up to you. The reason I mention that, though, is when I'm finished, I'm going to show you another piece of fabric. And I'll just bring you like a little preview. Here's another denim that I just purchased that I will definitely need to keep in mind which way that I'm cutting my fabric. Because look at this. This denim has some orange, it has some pink, it has some yellow. You know I'm gonna have fun with this. And it has just a very light stretch. This is a medium weight denim. This is gonna make a, either a great pair of jeans or a skirt, I don't know, but it's gonna have quilting in it because this is really fun. All right, back to our pieces. I've cut all my pieces on the scan and cut as you can see here. And let me take you over and show you how to put these together. And again, if you have any questions, just drop them in the comments. I'll come back and check them. And I know Brother Sos is in here too. So if you're wondering anything about what I'm using, the rotary blade, stuff like that, you can contact your brother, Dila. All right. Any questions so far? Looks like you are all rolling in. It's great to see you. Oh, hey, Helen. <laughs> the whole Wolfpack is in here. Wonderful to see you all. I know. I know you're probably like, why are you quilting? Because, you know, I love color blocking. So we'll just change the word around. Color blocking. All right, to the table. This is where I don't want you to look too closely to my points, but I will point out like the middle box here, those points look perfect. Um, right here, not so much, but I'm not going to point out all my errors, but if you want to take a screenshot, uh, I'm sure you could fill up a notebook on whoa, you really missed the beat on a couple things. But if you're staring at my skirt that much, then you have, we'll have a different discussion. <laughs> so this is one block, two, three. I've already sewn these together. I will sew one block with you just so you can see how this went together. Here's another block, one, two, three, and then here. Now, when I originally laid this fabric out, I have my skirt pattern here. And these are eight inch blocks so if you're downloading the same pattern from cindy's site or from the blog this is an eight inch block i was originally going to do something smaller but this is a lot of pieces 
And I didn't have like a whole month to do this. So <laughs> I kind of cried uncle and said, we're going with an eight inch block for this. Now here's my skirt pattern. And I know that if I want this on, if I want to use this fabric for the whole pattern, I kind of had to measure, uh, just to get an idea of how long the pattern is. Now this is for a longer skirt, this is for shorter. So I could just go with a little shorter length. And then my length for this is fine. Uh, if I want to cut this right down the center, I will make sure once I sew this together that the center of where it says cut on the fold for my pattern is right in the center of this box right here. And you could mark that with chalk, however you want to mark, that'll be my center front. Now, if I go to cut this, I just want you to take a look. Now, this isn't even sewn together yet. I'm definitely not going to have a lot of enough fabric on both sides. So once I sew this together, I will sew just black fabric along each edge. So a very cool color block. Now, if I wanted to mix this up a little bit to give you some ideas, I can spread this apart. I could add a strip of black fabric in here. Just think of a quilt with some, some borders. That would look nice as well. Kind of keep in mind where your pattern's gonna go. Now on the skirt, I'm not too concerned, but if this was a shirt, you might wanna change things up a little bit. And I wanna give you one more idea. If this is sewn together, you can see these lines match up here. The triangles all match. What if I were to slide this up a little bit and change this? It changes the whole dynamic of the quilt. So just because you sold a couple blocks doesn't mean they have to be sewn in right next to each other. So let me bring this up a little higher. This is if I were to sew it right together and you can kind of see that look. And then I'm just gonna slide this up a little bit where the triangle matches the bottom edge here. I, I kind of just moved it up an entire triangle mark. A lot of your squares will still match because mathematically they'll still work. And then I would just cut this bottom part off. So this would be, I'll just fold it up so you can see it. What do you think of that? Something totally different. So I'm just trying to give you some ideas for color blocking your fabric. That looks pretty cool too. And if this was my bottom hemline, this could be the center part, a very different looking fabric. Now, some of you that have followed me for a long time know I love decorating sleeves. What about if I used this right here for my sleeve pattern? I could take, add black fabric to each side. How much black fabric will lay your pattern out? So for example, here's one of my very old slopers. You can tell it's worn crazy. I could measure, oh, actually, it's perfect for a sleeve. If I look at the bottom, I can add a little bit for a hem and then the top. I can see the fabric ends here, so I would need to add at least this much fabric on each side. So I would actually sew the panels of fabric here and then cut out my pattern. So I don't try to add the panels to be the size of my pattern. Make your fabric first and then cut it out. Does that make sense? All right, so let's take this back and let me show you how we're gonna sew this together. Now I kept the photo of one of these blocks up on my computer screen or you can use your tablet the whole time so I could make sure that I was sewing these together in order. Cause trust me, when you're staring at a bunch of triangles, um, well, your mind can play tricks on you and you could sew it upside down. So let's see what I have here. So these are the two pieces, these are the four pieces I was mentioning where I turned them because I have a distinct grain line. So if I cut these up and down, I can really tell that. If I do it sideways, you're gonna see the grain line. So it's your choice, but just keep that in mind that if you want all of your grain lines to look the same, you would cut this fabric going up and down instead of sideways. You're still gonna sew them sideways like this, but that will just give you an idea for that. Then I have my triangles. And for here, I've got the black on the inside. And By the way, one more tip for you. This fabric was really, it looked almost the same on both sides for the black. And what I ended up doing is putting just a little chalk mark on the wrong side. That way I could quickly sew these and know that I wasn't sewing the wrong side to the fabric. I didn't put chalk on these though. And you can see how this is fraying. So that is gonna be my block. That's how I sew it together. Doesn't mean you couldn't change it and turn it, you know, a different way. But according to how I have this all put together for the first piece, 
this is this block here looks like this. This is how this went together. Now, if this is going to be fabric for a garment and you are not backing it, we're not putting batting, we're not putting anything else, you have to serge your edges. So I'm going to show you the back side of this. There's a lot of lint here. Let me just bring this up and show you the back side. I, every seam is surged. I sewed it first because I wanted to have perfect accuracy, even though judging by my points, they weren't so perfect, but <laughs> at least it was a 90 percenter, right? And so uh, if you're watching, you can show me the love in the comments because I'll read these later. Uh, it's a good first start, right? But I had to serge every single seam. So you have to sew certain sections, run them to the serger and press, and then sew the next section. So the first thing I did was I sewed all of the triangles together ran them to the serger, and then I would sew this panel here. Then I would sew this panel, and then I would sew this panel. So the triangles were first, and I'm just gonna, I don't usually use pins, but I'm just gonna throw pins on here just so we can keep these together when I get to the machine. There we go. And by the way, I had all of these blocks cut so I sewed them all together. They really, I think all three of these panels, including cutting, took less than an hour to sew, cut and sew, and press, and serge, in case you missed that. So here's my triangles, and then I know this piece here is gonna be sewn. So I'll go ahead and just put a pin there, and a pin here. So there, this panel will be sewn together. And once I have these triangles, they'll be sewn to this edge here. We're gonna serge all of that and then you sew these three. So it's very simple, but I'll go ahead and we'll just sew this one together because it's pretty fast. So I will meet you over at the sewing machine. And on my way, I'll check and see if you have any questions. On my way. <laughs> All right, any questions for me before I move on to sew these together? Oh, thanks, Josie. Do you like this fabric or do you like that orange? Oh, you wanna see that one again? Okay, hold on. This one? I did go shopping and I know you all are laughing because you know how much fabric I have, but I did go shopping. You can message me, I'll tell you where I got this. Is this gonna be fun or what? So that's project number two. So thanks, Josie, I love it too. Yeah, Josie, it's what I was mentioning about the grain line. Okay, for example, this color blocking, quilting color blocking would be awesome with a faux fur or suede and you have to keep mindful of the nap. You hit it right on the head. All right, check anything else? Oh, thank you. I agree, Ornell. <laughs> I think so too, Mary. Oh, thanks, Ann. I feel better. I'm in the 90 percentile. <laughs> so many options. So, hey, um, can you use a scan and cut brother? Uh, can you use a scan and cut with a brother? So, first of all, I sent, you can either send the files that I just did from that software to the scan and cut. I used a USB stick because I just had it right here and I didn't have Canvas Workspace open. But with your, with your scan and cut, if you have Canvas Workspace open, you can send it to your scan and cut as long as you have Wi-Fi. I didn't send this between a sewing machine. I sent it from the computer on or a USB, which you can use with any of the, they all take a USB, if that makes sense. Oh, thanks, Anne. I think you're going to love it. Ooh, put lace in the middle. That's a great idea, Tammy. <laughs> oh, Dolly, I'm makes me feel better. I agree. And thank you. All right, so did I miss anybody's questions? Thanks, Phyllis. <laughs> thanks, Lynn. I, I just like go blur my glasses a little bit. There's a couple points that I was like, I ripped out two squares and I was like, forget it. We're going to sew this together and make it work because you know what I could do is just add some embroidery or something over that spot that I don't like. There's always a fix. 
All right, let's go to the sewing machine and I'll show you just some tips for sewing this. And I have my ironing board ready for you as well because you're gonna need the ironing board. All right. Now I'm actually gonna sew this skirt tomorrow on my live show. So if you are enjoying this episode and you're like, hey, I wanna sew that skirt, uh, go ahead and make your fabric today and then tomorrow you can sew along with the skirt. Okay, so here's the triangles. I changed my thread to pink and I have gold down here just because I thought you could see better using the quarter inch foot, in case you don't know what that is. It's got the little lever here. It has one single hole though. Now I could change my needle plate to have the single hole needle plate if I want to. If you're having problem with your fabric getting stuck in your um, in that little area down here, then you'll wanna switch that. I just left it because I've been sewing a few things today. I'm using a straight stitch. And because I'm using denim, I'm not gonna use too narrow. A lot of times it'll go to 2.0 when you're piecing. I'm gonna use a 2.5. And you could even use a 3.0 if you're using a thicker denim. like that. That other denim I showed you with the orange and the pink, that's thicker than this. And I would actually use probably a 3.0. Also, because I'm using, actually, I'm going to raise that up. I did not backstitch at the front and the end of this because every end of the seam was going to be attached into another seam. Now, if you're gonna be using this color blocking for a garment where you know that the end is gonna be maybe the edge of your fabric, then you'll wanna stitch a few stitches and either do a stay stitch or a back stitch, just to secure it. You don't want your skirt falling apart while you're wearing it, right? All right, and this is probably the most fun part is just, <laughs> if you if you follow me on Instagram, you might have seen me post a photo in my story yesterday where I was like, what do you think I'm making? My husband came in and said, are you making flags? And I had them all attached. And of course, there was like, I don't know, three, let's see, four, eight, 12. There's like 18 of them. So they kind of did look like a flag. It doesn't matter which side you're sewing up. Just make sure that your triangles, that you're sewing them on the right corner, the right edge. You don't want to sew them on one of these other edges up here because that's not the angle. It's the long angle in between each one, which is why I try to keep my pattern pieces close by and I actually have the full block up on my computer screen so I can see that. All right, looks like that's it for the flags. While I'm here, I'm gonna go ahead and sew this middle section. As many pieces as you can just start sewing together without getting confused. I think that's the most important part. Don't get confused and think that you're sewing something together because you're doing it quickly and all of a sudden you have to rip something out. That's not a, not a happy feeling. All right, and then I'm gonna just take this one over here. So this will be the middle panel. Now I'm not gonna run these through the serger right now, but I'm going to walk you through it, okay? So I'm just gonna tell you now, <laughs> You would take all of these pieces you just sewed, go to the serger, and serge every edge. So you can kind of see I'm using, you know, different color threads. You can see. Go to the serger, and I would leave all these connected. Run this all through the serger to finish these edges. I'm not going to take that step because I don't think you need to watch me do that. But the serger is very important to finish these. If for any reason you don't have a serger, you could use an overlock stitch on your sewing machine and finish these edges because they're going to fray. And if it's a garment or fabric like a skirt, my legs are going to be rubbing it or unless you're adding lining. If you're adding lining, scratch the idea you don't have to serge. But if you're not adding lining and you're not adding a backing of any sort, you have to finish these edges. So then you can use it for a garment. Uh, let me just see what Vicki has to say. Would you choose a wider seam allowance with heavier fabric? Vicki, that is a great question. Okay, so that yes, I actually would. And in fact, what Cindy and I have been going back and forth because we've been having fun with this project. Cindy, she give me an A plus. I finished this one, not like the ugly sweater for Christmas. <laughs> um, this is addicting though. It's really fun. I mentioned to her on that software, you can change the seam allowance. Now a quarter inch is standard for quilting, but for that thicker denim, this one here, 
I'm going to change the seam allowances to a half of an inch because it's a thicker fabric. It's easier to sew. I can't use the quarter inch foot for that, but I could use my laser light if I can't sew straight or, you know, you can sew a half inch seam allowance. That's like what we usually use for garments. So for that, I definitely would switch it to a half inch seam allowance and I can change it in the software and send it to the scan and cut. Or you can also bring up a design in the scan and cut and change your seam allowance to whatever you need it to or cut it yourself, whichever one is. We just always like the fun tools, right? Okay, that was a great question. I think I saw one more come in too. Uh, Roxanne, can you just sew them on the serger? You can. And for a quarter inch seam allowance, if you have a four thread overlock and change your width, you could just do it on the serger. But I did not because there's a lot of points here. And if for any reason, it's, it's harder to have an exact quarter inch or half inch on the serger than it is on the sewing machine. I was just trying to be a little bit more accurate, but you could totally do it on the serger by itself. Uh, just make sure that you have the right setting and your seam allowance is exactly what your pattern is. But yes, you could. All right, let's see. Oh, hey Crafty, if you send me a private message, I'll tell you where I got that fabric. It's not a brother product, so. Uh, Lynn, I was not using a straight stitch needle plate, but you could. And that's if you have a problem with your fabric getting stuck in there. This stuff's so thick that it won't, I won't have a problem with it. But if I was you, if I were using, say, something real sheer, then I would. All right. I think that's good. All right, let's go back to the pressing now. I would run this through the serger or finish the edges. I see somebody asking what needle I'm using. I'm using a number 12, and it is a new needle, by the way. Well, it was new yesterday. I've been sewing for a day. Don't forget the video camera's right there, too. All right, now I want to point out a couple things. When I go to press these triangles, you would have surged them, so you're not going to press them open. So I'm going to press all of them going towards the darker fabric. Then I can keep them all the same. Use a iron with a little steam, a tailor's clapper to hold it in place. And I like to take the extra step of pressing the right side as well, just to make sure that it's laying nicely. You know, every once in a while you can give it a good pressing and you have a little gap on the right side. And you don't want that. So I wanna make sure that this seam is wide open. All right, and this last piece here. So you would have already surged this, pretend they're surging right there, and then you press it to one side. All right, now if I remember correctly, this piece here is going to be pressed. I better go grab mine, Let's make sure I do it right. Sorry, my iron is heating up. So if you look closely, you can see the surged edges. Everything was pressed to the dark. And then this middle piece here was pressed towards the inside. Okay, so we have the middle section, which I have a finished one here so you can kind of compare. The middle section, then we have these triangles because we're doing this piece. And what I mentioned is I really had to go and lay this out every time I sewed it because how easy is it to accidentally go like this or like this when you didn't want to? So I'm looking at the picture up on my screen or this picture here. And then I have the two gray pieces here. I was really looking for a third color for this, like a, a either a white denim, and I found a white denim, but the white denim that I found was a lot thicker than this fabric and really stretchy. It was not a good combination. So whatever fabrics you're piecing together, make sure they're all about the same weight, and if they have stretch, they have a similar stretch. So otherwise, I would have little pieces of white in here, but so be it. This is what we have. 
All right, so this is going to be sewn together, and these are going to be sewn together. So while I'm here, I'm just going to put a pin in these just so I can remember when I walk away from you. And I prefer to sew because I have my points on my triangles here that I haven't cut off yet, which I will be cutting off. I prefer to sew from the raw edges where they both matched like this instead of sewing down here from the triangle. I'll cut those triangle points off in a, here shortly. So this will be sewn together. And this will be sewn together. And again, you can get this quilt block for free. If you go to Brother's uh, blog, you can see the directions on how to sew it. And you go to Cindy's blog. If you want to change your colors up, it's pretty easy to do. Okay, let's go to the sewing machine. All right, I see a few questions. How does using a piece of wood help when pressing? So that is a tailor's clapper. Um, I have those on my website too. You add a little bit of steam to the seam. <laughs> that sounds like a rhyme. Steam to the seam. You can see how it pressed that seam down and kept it nice and crisp. It makes a nice crisp crease. Think of if you have your pants dry clean and you have that nice line going down your pants. If you give that seam, that fabric a little steam and hold the, the clapper there, it makes a nice crease. It's great for sewing. I use it nonstop with garments, but it makes your seams look really professional. I, I'll ask the Wolfpack that are all watching too. <laughs> all right. Could you edge stitch or top stitch inside the black pieces or would that affect the stretch of a garment? Bonnie, I love, well, you guys read my mind. Uh, so when I started doing this yesterday, I was thinking a top stitch on all the black pieces holding that seam in place would look phenomenal. Now, because these blocks are not so big, I tested one block first and the seams weren't moving around. So I didn't have to. But if you wanted to do it as like a decorative stitch, you know, we've got those beautiful stitches in the luminaire. If you're looking, they, we have some that look like a hand stitch. You've got the triple stitch. If you really want to have something really standout-ish, then that would be a great idea. But you don't have to do it. But you definitely could. Are you? Okay, let me see one more. <laughs> oh, in the serger, Doris, I was using, I used a three-thread narrow overlock stitch. So I used the right needle. And the three thread, and I made the stitch length a little bit longer because I didn't need to have all that bulk of thread in there. It's just to finish the edges. So I just changed the stitch length from a standard to just one up from that, depending on what surgery you're using. Oh, hey, Susie. Oh, you all are saying yes, yes, yes. The clapper absorbs the steam and makes a crease. Esther, what do you have for me? Can you skip the serger and line your garment? Yes, absolutely. Another option would be on that whole panel to put a thin piece of fabric on the back of your panel to cover it. And I'll talk about that here shortly. All right, back to the sewing machine. The sewing machine somewhere in there. <laughs> and we're just about finished with our block, by the way. All right, so I have, I like to start at this end, not the end that has the raw edges here or the seam, I should say. And I'll be cutting this triangle piece off. I waited till the end to do mine. If you've watched some of the other episodes, some of the other um, educators and ambassadors like to do it first. I just wait because then I take the ruler and make sure that everything is trued up in case there was anything that I sewed wrong. Now, because I cut this one on the scan and cut, it, the cutting's perfect. Now, a couple of my blocks, I just cut on my own just to get her done. And they were not as perfect as what the scan and cut did. I did add a back stitch here. You don't have to though, because this section, it depends if it's gonna be the end of your seam. I guess it's just a habit from sewing garments, right? I don't want my pants to fall down, to fall apart, <laughs> any of those things. So that looks really nice. Actually, I think I'm getting better. <laughs> and then we have this piece here. 
Um, I see somebody asking again about a needle. So I could have used a denim 14 jean needle, uh, the denim number 14. That's what I normally use for denim. So again, I'm using a 12 here, but I could use a number 14 as well. That piece looks great. And one more. Then we have one more pressing and we're almost finished. So I would love to know in the comments, because I read these later, Are have you tried doing any of this color blocking or piecing with knits or any other fabrics besides uh, a cotton, a, a denim, like a cotton? But I'm just curious, because I'll share with you what I'm going to be working on next. So let's go press these. And we're just about finished. I, uh, did you happen to catch, while I'm pressing, I'll just chat with you. Did you happen to catch last week's show with Jerry? That was pretty fun. All right. And I'm just pressing these towards the inside. I kind of, what I did is I pressed these. Your seam will actually kind of tell you which way to press. All right. And again, I like to press one more time from the right side when I'm designing fabric because I want to make sure that that's a nice straight seam. If you have anything that's not laying totally flat, you can fix it right then. I got a little bit of water on my fabric because I was supposed to, that was uh, my fault, not the iron fault. All right, and then we have this. So let me just see. You know what, on this piece here, because this is going to be pretty bulky, I'm going to change this and press it towards the outside. That way, when I sew these together, one seam allowance is going that way and one's going the other way. So I'm just going to switch that around real quick. Very easy. Again, the steam. See how nice and flat that seam is? Looks just beautiful. All right. That's not what it's supposed to look like, right? So that's why you have your picture. I'll bring this back up. Actually, that doesn't look bad though, but that's not what I had planned. So let's go this way. And if you don't wanna do a whole piece of fabric, maybe you just do a little section and use it for a pocket or make a smaller block and use it down the edge of maybe a pant leg, something like that. So this looks really good. And now I'm going to sew these together I'll sew this seam here and this seam here. And when I do that, you can kind of feel in the middle where these seam allowances, one's going one way, one's going the other. That's where I match everything up. So let's go ahead and go back to the machine. All right, I'll just see if there's any questions. Or what pressing, I'm not, uh, Tanya, I'm using actually an iron uh, if you message me, it's not a brother product. If you message me, I can tell you which iron. I see Evelyn asking that too. So just send me a, a private message and I can tell you what it is. <laughs> Thanks, Cindy. <laughs> it's kind of fun, isn't it? All right. Yeah, you know what? That's what I was thinking. Uh, if you want to use on the back of this that you don't want to add anything on the back, then you can have a muslin. So that will work. I see Judy in here. Judy, I saw your email this morning. So um, I actually will reply to your email. I was working on it last night. So so no worries. I saw it. All right, to the sewing machine. Oh, Cindy, were you saying you kind of like this look? Yeah, it's, that's kind of cool too. Whichever way you want to do it, that is, that does look kind of cool. That is one of the best parts of using playing with this quilt because you can actually 
change it. So actually that looks really fun. But if I do that, then I got to change all of them. Forget it. We'll go this way. <laughs> all right. So I'm going to reach, I'm going to feel that middle part, make sure that that's matched up. I have not cut my triangles off yet. Usually you could do that before now if you want, but I just waited since I had so many pieces. If you're going to do an entire piece of fabric, you just want to kind of make this in order that you can just get a lot done really fast. I suppose if you were making a whole quilt, you'd want to get everything done pretty fast too, by the way. All right. That looks pretty good. I think I'm getting better at the points. Now see how those middle seams match up? Now that's almost perfect. Beautiful. All right. So now we have this here. Match up the center parts. I just think these would make amazing sleeves. Now that we looked at that pattern laying on the table with a sleeve on the next jacket, this could be very cool. Make sure my seam allowances are facing the right direction. I think it's more important to make sure that your center seam is matched up, that your seam allowances are going the right way. That's almost more important than anything because if you start sewing that and it is wrong, you're going to end up having to rip it out. And ripping quarter inch seam allowances is absolutely no fun whatsoever. When I get to this edge, I lift up my foot because I want to make sure that seam allowance lays flat. I see one mishap there. I actually would probably rip that out, but let's go press and we'll look at the rest of this and I'm not gonna rip it out with you on. Not with you on, but I have to tell you something. I see the mistake I made. I'll take you to the ironing board and show you. This one would be enough that I would change, that I would rip out. So look at what I did. Remember I just said, make sure your seam allowances are laying nice and flat. Well, they're not. They're off just a little bit. And then this part here is off enough that I would actually rip that out. And you know how I can tell? I must have stretched that fabric just a little bit because it's too far over here. So that one I would fix. This one looks great. So I'm just gonna press it just to, so you can see the end of this. I think my iron just ran out of water too. So this side's perfect, this side not so much. And so I will keep the seam from here to here and rip that out to fix that because I must have just stretched it just enough that it didn't line up. But there's how easy the square is. All right, let's take a look back at this fabric. I'll give you a few more tips before I cut my skirt out. All right, so if this is what I decided to do, and I look at this and say, you know what, this is going to make a cool skirt, kind of piece this together, decide if you're going to use all three panels, or if you're going to just, you know, one panel and having black on either side would look very cool too. So if you're new to this, we've got plenty of black denim here. Again, this is my salvage, so I would want to line up this panel so your grain lines match. Look at how cool this is when I add some black fabric to the outside. So I could actually just have this as a panel on the side of my fabric. Maybe this is the side of my skirt, just asymmetrical. Or if I want to go ahead and give myself fabric on both sides, I just lay my fabric here. This is exactly how I would mark it. And I know black's hard to see, but you'll be able to see this just fine. Hopefully. <laughs> I just have to slide this. I'm kind of leaning over the camera here. All right, so here's my fabric. Here's my panel. I know I'm going to need some extra fabric here in order to have enough for, let's say, I want to cut this skirt out. 
to cut this skirt, even if I just have one panel, I have to make sure I have enough fabric on each side. Or if I'm going to have a, all three of these panels, I will need to measure how much extra that I'm going to need. So the first thing I would do is sew these panels together, lining up those center sections like I mentioned before. And let's just pretend that these are sewn together. Once they're sewn together, I will measure the width of my fabric. Then I will compare the width of my pattern. How much extra do I need? I know I'm going to need extra for the bottom hem. I might need a little extra through here. The other thing is after I attach the fabric, then I can cut anything out. So this will be my fabric then when I go to cut. Does that make sense? If I decide I want to add some more black to the side, I will measure from my fabric, give myself a nice line. Just going to use this here. So here is one piece of fabric that is the same length as this here. Let's just go ahead and cut this. So I will take this fabric here with wrong sides together and stitch that together a little bit. You want to make sure you're not stretching any of the fabric while you sew this, especially when this fabric has a lot of stretch to it. If you stretch, when, especially when you're sewing this quilting together, it can really be kind of not fun. All right, so if I sew this all the way down this seam, when I press this open, you can see now I've made a panel of fabric. See how cool this is going to look? So then I would lay this out and then decide. I don't know, you guys can help vote. Should I sew a piece of black fabric in between this? Or should I just sew this together and have this three panel as the middle of my skirt? I don't know, it's pretty fun. That's the option I have. So I'm gonna go ahead and play with this. I'm gonna work on it this evening. Sew together my fabric. And then tomorrow, I'm going to sew my skirt together. So if you want to follow along while I cut and sew the skirt, you can follow me tomorrow on Angela Wolf, my Facebook and YouTube page. All right? Let me see if there's any other questions. What do you think? Should I do black panels in between them or do them all together? What's your vote? Sew it all together with black on the outside. That's kind of what I'm thinking. I don't know. It'd be kind of fun. Oh, Karina says black in between. So now I'm going to have to lay out little slices of black just to see what it looks like. I think it's going to be fun. How do you know? You can just measure the width of the fabric you're using for the black and then cut the same length as your panels. Now, I did make sure that my panels were long enough for my skirt. If for some reason you go ahead and sew your stuff together and it's not long enough for a skirt, you're going to have to add another panel, even if you cut part of it off. Uh, tomorrow, I'll talk a little bit about hemming because I don't have, because I have the quilt block and the quilt block looks perfect at the bottom. How am I going to do the hem? I will probably add a facing so I don't interrupt that quilt block, but we'll see. All right, any more questions for me? And looks like, whew, that was a, that hour went by so fast. Sew together with black on the outside, black in between. I'm gonna have to, <laughs> I should have a boat. Hmm, I'll go back and look and decide. Everyone's saying black in between would look so cool. Uh, the panel would take away from the bulk of the seams meeting. I agree, Marianne. I agree. All right, so hold on. Let's go take a look at what this really looks like. Everybody's saying black in between. Some people are saying, so let me take this black panel that I just cut and put it in between so we can get a real visual for this. Well, I actually have my, I have my rulers here that are black. You can cut, they kind of look like fabric, don't they? Why don't I put that in between just to see what we have? So there's one with 
black in between. Of course, that's not fabric, but you know what I mean. And then here's one with fabric in between. How does that look? Oh, that's pretty cool. You guys are right. I love that. Ooh. I think that I think you have something going on this. <laughs> Cuz it kind of takes away, it breaks it up enough, but it's still very trendy. How wide of a black seam then do you think? Maybe 2 inches this wide or should I go a little less? Wide? or narrow? That's my next question. Now for the back, I think I'll just do the back. I mean, <laughs> not that nobody looks at the back of your skirt, but I'm thinking I'll just do the back in a solid black. And then when you turn around, that's kind of like the wow effect. How wide of black panels should I put in between? Just out of curiosity. Did that help, Vicki? That was a good idea. Here you go. Wide or narrow? Everyone's saying black in between. <laughs> Just a strip like a border, uh, like a border. Okay. I could put black at the bottom, Denise. Mm -hmm. I know so many ideas from one quilt block. Okay, so before I let you go, I'll, and I will. Everybody say it'll be beautiful, no matter what. Thank you, thank you. I'm going to show you another fabric that I'm going to test. And I'll share with you in the weeks to come, but hold, stay tight. All right. You know, I can't go anywhere without like thinking I have to have a matching top to go with this. So I found some ribbed knit. It's beautiful. And I think it'll match. It's like a little bit off color, but so I've got a rich, very, look at how stretchy this is. I'm going to test cutting this on the scan and cut. I will keep you informed. I'm going to use the fabric mat with the rotary blade. I'm also, what colors am I going to match with that? I've got gray, I've got black, and I have light gray. So I've got three different colors of gray here. Well, three different fabrics. And let me just show you real quick on this block. If I bring this up. Instead of having the triangles right here with the knit, I'm going to turn those into squares because I'm just afraid with that knit, it's going to stretch too much cutting on the bias like that. So I'm going to turn them into more blocks. I do love this one here. And that would look really, really cool with those colors. So I might have to play with that a little bit. But unfortunately, those are all cut on the bias because they're blocks. So we'll see. Uh, but in the meantime, I got to finish this skirt because I think it's going to look fabulous. Maybe it'll bring warm weather. Everybody's saying narrow strips, narrow strips. One and a half inch wide, Donna says. Okay. I think I'll test it. I'll test it and I'll post a photo on Facebook and Instagram and you can all vote. And then tomorrow during the live show at 1.30, we'll sew it together. How's that? Wide, at least two inches. Everybody, this is going to be really fun. <laughs> All right, so I don't see any more questions. Let's see, have you thought of mixing some red or pink? Oh, Lynn, I did. Uh, especially, well, either. I actually was thinking of having some white, something like that in there, but I couldn't find the same thickness and stretch of fabric. It was limited where I went, unfortunately. Uh, Josie said, stabilize the knit. Oh, but I don't want to. I want it to keep the, oh, maybe I could spray it with starch. I could try that. I just want to make sure it doesn't stretch out too much. I'm going to play with it just a little bit. <laughs> Card trick block. No kidding. Oh, that'd be pretty. Sil silver metallic. That sounds great. All right. Patty has a good idea. Uh, the software, Deborah, is called Advanced Quilt Design Software. It's uh, You can find it at a brother dealer. It's really fun. And by the way, I haven't been playing with it for very long. So it's very, very easy. Uh, Diane, did you make your top? I did. I made my top and I embroidered it. It's knit. All right. I think that's it. All right, everyone. Have a wonderful day. It was so fun hanging out with you. Uh, I cannot wait to see. Now, are you quilting something? Because if you are, you see those hashtags up above? Brother Sews, Brother Scan and Cut. 
Put those in your comments, especially on Instagram. Brother loves to see what you're working on. Make sure you tell them you're working on the Quilt to Fashion Challenge. And uh, I can't wait. I actually go scan those too. It's fun to see what you're working on. So until next time, I let's see, today is Tuesday. Cindy Hogan will have her live show at 4.30 Eastern, Software Shut-In. Tomorrow at 1.30, I will be live sewing that skirt. You'll have to stay tuned. I will post some pictures here shortly and let you vote on what I should have thin or thick lines. We'll leave it at that. And then tomorrow afternoon, I think Emily's on spring break, so she probably doesn't have a live show. And then Thursday, we will be back with another Quilt the Fashion Challenge, Kim Montanese and Jane Olson. Very, very fun. All right, everyone. Thanks for watching and tell brother how much you love the shows and we'll keep them rolling for you. Bye.